Welcome to another FPL video. Today we're covering the best budget midfielders. We've done so for defenders and goalkeepers already, so check those videos out. And we've got the forwards to come next, as well as some other content, so stay tuned for that. And let's just jump straight into it. During preseason, Andreas Pereira has started two of the possible three matches and he's also got one assist. And the stats on the left-hand side are from last season in the Brazilian League. 13 matches, two goals, one assist. And FPL points is actually the amount of FPL points he has scored throughout his whole career. So every season combined, nothing great. But I think Andreas Pereira could be one of the best 4.5 million options. And there's only one other at that price bracket that we're going to cover today. And the rest will be 5 million and above. As you can see on the right-hand side, though, some very poor fixtures. Liverpool at home, Arsenal away. But I think Brentford at home, Wolves away, and Brighton at home are decent fixtures where Andres Pereira could get an assist. But with him, you're mainly just relying on minutes and someone who can fill in with two to three points and they can come off your bench and do a job for you that way. And if they get the assist or the goal every now and then, then there's no problem and that should all be good. So Andres Pereira could be one of the best 4.5 million options. He's playing as an attacking midfielder just behind Mitrovic in preseason. And that could also lead to a nice duo and double up between those two. The other 4.5 million midfielder is Josh De Silva, who has two starts out of a possible four for Brentford in pre-season. And in the last campaign, he didn't really feature too much. But with the departure of Christian Eriksen, that does open the door slightly for Josh De Silva. And he could quietly be the best 4.5 million option. Now, if I had to pick between him and Pereira, I still think I'd lean towards the Brazilian. But it's very close and I'd keep an eye on this situation. And a lot of you that are going for a midfield free and you want two 4.5 million midfielders, you could go for Josh De Silva and Andres Pereira. Another one at that same price who will also offer certainty of starts and minutes is Colback from Nottingham Forest. But in terms of attacking returns, I would favour Josh De Silva and Andres Pereira. There's not much more to really comment on with these options. We're now going to move on to the 5 million and above players and things could spice up a little bit now. Leon Bailey has had a really good preseason. He's got three goals and assists in four matches, including a goal and an assist against United. And he got 37 points in his debut season for Villa last season. 6.1% ownership. But as you can see, one goal, three assists in 18 matches. So very underwhelming. And we expected some very big things from him. He was linked with a lot of big clubs and Champions League uh, clubs as well. But I think Leon Bailey could actually have a very good season here. And he's relatively nailed, it seems, in preseason. He should play a big part in Steven Gerrard's plans some good fixtures as well at least to start the season the first three games are good but then you look from gimmicks four to seven and a lot of you that have a double up of maybe bailey and cash for example you might struggle a little bit there with those tough fixtures but if you have the squad depth you could get away with it and at only five million bailey could easily sit on your bench and i think he's actually probably the best five million midfielder on off a bit of a spoiler alert there but that's my opinion let me know who you think the best five million midfielder is and also the best midfielder that we cover in this video and let's try to get this to 150 likes a man united winninger who is only priced at five million could be a great option but i still think rashford will be first choice unless alanga does a really good job when he gets some minutes whether he comes off the bench or gets a start and proves himself but two goals and three assists in 21 games is a decent kind of breakout season he hasn't really shown what he's fully capable of yet and i think there's much more to come from him but rashford should be the main left winger but at five million if alanga can get some starts it's not the worst option in the world and maybe he's going to get the most attacking returns of players at five million or under besides leon bailey who i would expect to be the very best and in terms of pre-season he only got one assist but he's also only got one start and he proved himself there with that assist his performances haven't been that great though I've noticed a few United fans kind of questioning his performances and they prefer how Rashford has been doing in pre-season. But obviously that's all subjective and I haven't seen enough of Elanga's performances specifically to really comment there. If any United fans are watching, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. He scored 59 points last season and his ownership is 1.5%. The fact is though, Leon Bailey is 5 million and I would rather go for him. But Elanga is still worth keeping in mind and he could be a great option in the future. The last 5 million midfielder covered in this list is Dewsbury Hall, who had a very good season, at least overall. Maybe not FPL-wise, he scored 70 points, but I think he did very good in the grand scheme of things. And he should be fairly nailed in that Leicester side, especially if Tielemans leaves, which is quite likely at the moment. One goal and two assists in 28 games isn't anything spectacular, but some decent underlying numbers for someone who started at 4.5 million. And also in pre-season, he has scored one goal in four matches. So Dewsbury Hall could be someone to keep an eye on. 
I think he can push on to the next level. But at 5.5 million and above, you've got options that will probably get much more goal contributions. And you've also got Leon Bailey and potentially Alanga. So Dewsbury Hall is maybe at the bottom of this list, but he's actually a player that I think is pretty good in real life. Overall, his overall play is fantastic. And I think he could only improve and push on to the next level with maybe more goal contributions. If he can do so, then I think he just becomes an even better FPL option. At only 2% ownership, I think Fornals could be one of the best differentials around this price. He scored 117 points last season, and in terms of preseason, he has started four out of a possible five matches. So really good stuff. Six goals and four assists in 36 games, and seven big chances, 10 big chances created. For someone who's only 5.5 million, that is very impressive. But when you're overshadowed by the likes of Jared Bowen, I, it's kind of understandable why Pablo Fornals is going under the radar. But some good fixtures from gimmicks 2-4. to four. Man City and Tottenham aren't ideal, but at 5.5 million, you could still bench him and maybe go for another defender, attacker, or even midfielder to come into his stead. But I have to say, Fornals is a decent option. He's very underrated in FPL, but there are better options, I think, at 5.5 million. And I'd still be a bit concerned if he's going to play as many minutes as preseason would suggest. Another differential at 2.3% ownership, Gordon hit the 100 point mark in his breakout season, four goals and three assists, and in terms of preseason, he started two games and he has featured in every single one of them, and he should be a big part of Frank Lampard's plans there at Everton, and an XG and expected assists of over four, two big chances and four big chances created. I would expect these numbers to increase, and Everton, if they do improve, I think that will only help Anthony Gordon to show his best version and he's only going to improve he's at a young age and he's got some good fixtures to start the season so there's a lot to like with Anthony Gordon but at 5.5 million I think there are better choices and that's why I'm not going to dwell too much on Anthony Gordon despite the fact that he's a good player he's going to improve and I can see him scoring 100 plus points yet again whenever we speak about Gordon it's always preceded by Ramsey and we always talk about the chef uh, for Christ's sake but Jacob Ramsey had a very good season last year, 109 FPL points, and his ownership is also 3.3%. Very similar to Gordon, he started two games in preseason, including one against United, and he's featured in every single game. Three matches, six goals and one assist in the last campaign, and I can see him taking his game to the next level. Aston Villa have plenty of good midfielders, but I still think Jacob Ramsey forms part of Aston Villa's best 11. Good fixtures, at least from gimmicks 1-3 to three to start the season, and you could bench him afterwards, but once again, I hate to say it, I think there are better choices around these prices. Damari Gray scored 106 FPL points last season and his ownership is 1.2%. He has started two out of a possible three games in pre-season. He got five goals and five assists. I remember he had a very good start to the last campaign under Rafa Benitez and he's got some decent underlying numbers and he's one maybe to keep an eye on. He's a bit underrated. Everyone talks about Gordon and Ramsey and a few others, but I still wouldn't go for Damari Gray, I think, to start the season. I think there are too many concerns of Everton and I'd be very worried about them. Damari Gray should be a starter for most games, but I still think there are better options even Gordon potentially they should both score a similar amount but I would back Gordon a little bit more in my opinion let me know what you think of that one Damari Gray is underrated and I recognize that but I want to focus mainly on what I think are the very best options and whilst Damari Gray is someone we should keep at the back of our minds I'm going to now delve into in my opinion the best 5.5 million midfielder while I believe Neto is somewhat overrated by some in the FPL community, he is a good player and he got two goals in two preseason matches. He's looking on form and in the 2020-21 season, he scored 124 FPL points. His ownership is just shy of 20%, so he's fairly popular and I think that will only increase once we get closer to the 5th of August and that infamous deadline. 13 games, one goal and one assist. Obviously, it was a season ridden with injuries, unfortunately, but I think Neto could bounce back can do a very good job fantastic fixtures in the first six game weeks after that it has become very poor but you could easily switch Neto to another 5.5 million midfielder who has a good fixture run so it's not the worst thing in the world and I think to start the season Neto could be the best at 5.5 million I just think he's a bit overrated by some but I have to say preseason has somewhat you know made me lean more towards the Neto wave I'm not gonna get him into my team just yet he might still feature, but it's something I'm definitely considering, especially if I need a midfielder around this price point. Michael Lee showed sparks last season in his debut Crystal Palace campaign, and I think he can take his game to the next level this year. We haven't seen him enough in pre-season because he has a foot injury, and it's a race against time to see if he will be fit for the Premier League opener against Arsenal in game week one. But two goals and six assists, nine big chances created with limited minutes is very impressive stuff, so he's one to keep an eye on. He's a mega differential. His ownership is 0.8%. So maybe I wouldn't go for him right now. Crystal Palace have a pretty poor set of opening four fixtures. After that, it does get a little bit better. But at least it's someone to keep in mind, keep tabs on, and maybe bring in later on in the season. 
But would I go into Gaming One with Michael Elise? Probably not, especially with all the injury problems surrounding him. I've talked a lot about Wissa in previous videos. He scored 92 points last season and he actually kind of experienced a massive upturn in form with the formation change and also with the arrival of Ericsson. Now with the Danish international going to United, that might impact Wissa a little bit, but he did score in pre-season, one goal in two starts, but there's also the arrival of Lewis Potter. So there could be a sharing of minutes between the two. And whilst we haven't really seen too much of Lewis Potter yet, he has also scored in preseason and he hasn't started a single game. He scored when he came off the bench. So that will be very interesting to see. But Wissa, I have to say, was very impressive in the second half of the last campaign. And at 5.5 million, I think he could offer tremendous value. Seven goals and two assists. And the underlying numbers aren't that great. But considering the lack of minutes and starts, I think it's still good in the grand scheme of things. And I have to say, I think Wissa could also do something similar and get even more points this time around and possibly break the 100-point barrier. Bruno Guimaraes has started two out of the three games that Newcastle have played in pre-season and in the game that he didn't start he came off the bench and scored against TSV 1860 München and I like Bruno Guimaraes as an option but not as much as others around 6 million and also in the price brackets below and those that we've already discussed but five goals and one assist in 17 appearances he's a bit of a hybrid of a defensive midfielder and box to box and he's definitely very impressive and I think he could offer more FPL points this season once again another one who can break the 100 point barrier mark but I'm not as keen on the Brazilian as I once was. And later in this video, we're going to cover a few 6 million midfielders that could be even better and maybe some that we haven't really talked about enough in recent videos. This may seem extremely left field, but Rodri was a fantastic option last season. Only 10 points fewer than Phil Foden and 8 less than Riyad Mahrez with 127 FPL points. He's only 6 million, 7 goals and 2 assists. He started both games in pre-season and despite the signing of Calvin Phillips, you'd expect the Spaniard to still be the main defensive midfielder for Manchester City and his ownership is only 2.4%. Yes, I don't think most of us will go with him and it takes a precious Man City slot, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I think Rodri should be considered at least and we should be a bit open-minded about this one. And he scored a lot of crucial goals as well, including one in the finale against Aston Villa. So keep an eye on that one. And Man City have the best fixtures to start the season. Jesse Lingard hasn't featured in preseason yet, but I still think he's someone worth considering. And a bit similar to a few others in this list, he has had a campaign where he really shown what he's capable of. And obviously we're talking about the 2020-21 season, at least the second half with West Ham, where he got nine goals and five assists and 15 bonus points in around 1,400 minutes. So really good stuff. And he got 106 FPL points in that campaign, despite not having that many minutes in the grand scheme of things. Newcastle away, West Ham at home, Tottenham at home, Man City where we've covered this with the best goalkeepers as well it's not great for Nottingham Forest but it's still not too bad and I think from an offensive point of view I could see some returns there for Nottingham Forest strikers and also for Jesse Lingard there in the midfield and they're also linked with a move to go for Aaron Ramsey in the midfield. And that will only bolster their attack and also the options there in terms of the spaces they create and the runs that are made by Jesse Lingard and Aaron Ramsey. Obviously, that's all speculation. Let's see how that develops. But Jesse Lingard could be a great FPL option at 6 million and perhaps the best. But I still would be a bit cautious about this one. He didn't get that many minutes last season. When he did, though, he... Came up with the odd assist here and there and also goals, but I still would be a bit cautious about this one and maybe view from afar and late in the season we can start getting Jesse Lingard once he proves himself and acclimatizes to his new club. A very overlooked option is Harry Wilson. He's probably one of the best options from the newly promoted sides. Six million, he got 10 goals and 19 assists last season in 41 matches. So everyone looks at Mitrovic and of course, what he did was perhaps more impressive. But Harry Wilson getting double digits in terms of goals and assists and almost 20 assists, by the way, is absolutely ridiculous. And also in the 2019-20 season, the last time he was in the Premier League with Bournemouth, he scored seven goals and got one assist. And it's really impressive stuff. His ownership is less than 1%. And and also during pre-season, he has scored one goal and got one assist in three matches. Some pretty poor fixtures, especially in game week one. But Harry Wilson could be one of the best six million midfielders. And we don't really talk enough about him. So what are your thoughts about Harry Wilson? And do you think that we should go for him or even consider him? I mean, it's a difficult one. I think I wouldn't start the season with him. But once again, another one to keep tabs on and see how he evolves throughout the season. But he could definitely be really good, especially with a set piece for it from penalties and also free kicks.
The final midfielder in this list is someone we covered in the best midfielders video, and that's Martinelli. He has returned in every single game during preseason. One goal and three assists, including an assist against Chelsea. Six million price point, 13.6% ownership. He got six goals and seven assists last season. And look at the fixtures. They're absolutely fantastic. 13 big chances in the last campaign and 110 FPL points. And it looks like he's the main left winger right now, especially with Smith Rowe struggling for fitness, just like he was at the end of last season. And that's where Martinelli shone, you know, really came into his own and started nailing down that left wing spot. And if he can remain fit, because Martinelli has suffered with a lot of injuries in the last few years, I think he could be the best six million midfielder and also the best midfielder covered in this video. Let me know what you think of this one, but I'm really impressed by his preseason. Arsenal are looking sharp and I think they could build something pretty nice for the upcoming season and be competitive at least. And Martinelli could be absolutely insane in terms of value in this Premier League season. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's get this video to 150 likes or beyond even, and let's try to get to 15,000 subscribers. We're making strides there. So thank you very much for that you can follow me on twitter and instagram dylan rcm and also become a patron or a channel member the links are in the description below the same goes for the discord server and the fpl league all of that is there so enjoy the rest of your summer break and also good luck for the upcoming premier league season and i'll see you next time <laughs>